This segment of Delmarva Life is brought to you by Chesapeake Eye Center. Protecting your eyes and face is a natural instinct. What's the first thing you do if something's coming at you? Well, you put your hands up over your face. But not all danger can be avoided. Yeah, it seems we're always getting stuff in our eyes. Sometimes we rub our eyes trying to get it out, and we end up making it much worse. In some cases, you end up with a very painful corneal abrasion. Hi, Elizabeth, what happened? As an ophthalmologist at Chesapeake Eye Center, Dr. Katherine Smoot sees corneal abrasions or corneal injuries all the time. Cornea is a clear dome-shaped structure on the external part of your eye. And that's what you're looking through when you see somebody's eye color and their pupil, you're looking through that clear cornea. It's also at a vulnerable location, sometimes taking the brunt of any contact. But the outermost layer is what we call the corneal epithelium. And I say the corneal epithelium, which is only about five cell layers thick, or 50 microns, is like a bunch of people or soldiers standing arm to arm, arms locked, trying to pre present a barrier to injury in order to protect the eye. Dr. Smoot says there are hundreds of causes of corneal injury, but what she sees the most are caused by foreign bodies, paper cuts, tree branches, fingernails, and hair utensils, just to name a few. Well, there are certain risk factors for injuries to the cornea. Extended contact lens wear is certainly a risk factor. Dry eye can be a risk factor. If you have problems with your eyelids or inability to close your eyes is a risk factor. Certain hobbies, sports, or occupations are risk factors for injuries. And if you have ever experienced a corneal abrasion, you already know they hurt. The cornea is the most densely innervated part of the human body. So if you think about when you injure your skin, how tender that can be, well, there's about three to 600 times more nerves in that cornea epithelium than there even is in your skin. That's why corneal abrasions or injuries or infections are so incredibly painful. Before treating a corneal abrasion, Dr. Smoot does a thorough exam. The first thing we certainly do is take a really accurate history, trying to see if there's something they don't remember happening, or if they're contact lens wearers or have had a history of other viral infections. And then we'd want to do a detailed slit lamp exam. The slit lamp examination is a tool. You sit in the chair and you put your chin in the chin rest and we look at that. Um, for any signs of where the cornea may be either injured or if there's a foreign body under the lid that could be creating injury to the cornea. As far as treating a corneal abrasion, Dr. Smoot says it usually just takes time. Mostly you have to let it heal in. Now, often we'll use some antibiotic ointments or drops, and the reason for this is because now you've damaged your epithelium, there's a risk of infection. Um, in some cases, they will use a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, which may help reduce some of the pain. In some severe cases, you may want to use a bandaged contact lens if it's under the supervision of your eye care provider, or even a pressure patch. But honestly, of all those things, it's just time and letting that epithelium quickly heal in. Most of them will heal in within 24 to 48 hours. Dr. Smoot adds, prevention is your best bet. Number one, if you're contact lens wearer, wear the contact lenses as per their instruction. And certainly don't put them in if you've got a red or painful eye. If you're doing any activities that are high risk for a corneal injury, such as racket sports, um, hunting, yard work, these type of things where tree branches or other activities can engage a cornea, wear protective eyewear. Protective eyewear is really the key. Dr. Smoot says a viral infection can also be to blame, so if you have the symptoms of a corneal abrasion but don't recall injuring your eye, it's always best to have it checked out by an ophthalmologist. And to read more about Chesapeake Eye Center, go to WBOC.com and click on our picture at the top of the page. But you know, problems with your eyes don't just affect your eyes. Yeah, they can often determine a lot more about your health. According to experts at WebMD, in rare instances, a bloody eye may be a sign of severe high blood pressure or a platelet disorder. Bulging eyes may indicate thyroid disease. If your eyes are two different colors, it's usually inherited, but if they change color, that may mean you have something foreign in your eye. A droopy eyelid can mean you're just getting older. In rare cases, it may indicate a brain tumor. If your pupils are not symmetrical, WebMD says that that could be a sign of a stroke, a brain aneurysm, or maybe multiple sclerosis. Yellow eyes can indicate diseases of the liver, and when it comes to our kids, a large or cloudy eye may be a sign of congenital glaucoma, and a crossed eye is usually correctable, but in rare cases it may be a sign of a tumor or neurologic disorder.
Hmm. Well, it was the eyes of a young girl that had one dentist very concerned when she came in for a routine cleaning. Up next, find out what he saw and why he's now being credited for possibly saving her life. Wouldn't it be nice if everyone could afford to see the dentist? Well, now you can. We're going to hear about a free dental clinic right here on Delmarva. Well, maybe you're having trouble with your teeth and its sensitivity. Find out how you can get rid of the pain for good. Delmarva Life, we'll be right back.